What's going on, Doji fam? It's your boy, the Black Master Doji, returning with another episode of the Doji Anime Academy podcast. I almost forgot the name of the podcast. Um, this week, this week, today, I have uh, my boy, Frankie, the One Piece expert. You may know him from his YouTube channel. We're going to talk about some One Piece. So without further ado, let me put my boy on. How are we in? Yo, Frankie. Hey, how you doing? All right, man. So we live. So before we begin, let me just uh, give me the chance to introduce yourself, let the fans know who you are in case they don't already know who you are. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, hey guys, I, I'm Franky. Uh, I I have a One Piece channel. Uh, I, I also do a few other anime, like on Fridays I usually do uh, something about a different anime, but I mainly make One Piece videos. Been at it for about a year or so. Yeah, that, that's pretty much all there is to know about me. Thanks for having me on here, dude, seriously. No, yeah, of course, man. Of course, I saw, I saw I saw your page and I was like, shit, yeah, we need to talk One Piece. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good to me. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. So, like the title says, today. Oh, you got a fan in the chat, bro. Let me. Oh, do I? Me, who is it? Um, Young Kata Curry. Uh, oh, I Young see. Ka- yeah. Yeah. He. Yeah. That's dope, man. Um. All right. So, like the title says, we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about a very vague topic, but we're gonna kind of try to break it down as much as we can we're gonna try to theorize exactly how one piece is bound to end from all the things that have been going on um now with the reverie coming up and what just happened in um with big mom and everything and sanji and all that shit one piece is getting really really serious it's getting really serious and i it's it's risa i remember back when it first started now like this is just like some nice little fun show where this guy's gonna find friends um and he's not gonna really i don't think he's gonna ever gonna find the one piece he's not gonna really do much um and then i think it's when it got to the part where they fought um the arlong pirates that's kind of where i saw that it was getting to a point where it's gonna this show is bound to get really serious real quick so yeah i think we should kind of start off with uh with the first for the people that don't know i guess we should kind of talk a little bit about the reverie and how big that is to how the um the manga is gonna continue by the way spoilers alert if you're spoiler alert if you're not like caught up i hope you are caught up you should be because one piece is amazing but yeah just throwing that out there before anybody gets mad at us but i'm gonna let you talk um go on your spiel about the reverie reverie a little bit yeah, I mean, since pretty much almost the very beginning of the story, I think the first time we hear about the Reverie was in Drum Island, which is the right. Chopper arc, which right, is right. With the like episode 80-ish. They mention mm-hmm. it because Wapol's like, yeah, I, get, I, get, I go to Reverie or whatever. And it's just built up as this meeting that happens every four years between every king of every country. And pretty much if you go there you can't say anything that would even slightly upset one of these kings or leaders or whatever because it could potentially like ignite an international war which would obviously be not (laughs) yeah i I mean we have like vivi who just gets like shit on for some reason because she said something waffle didn't like or something that we we got to see that which was interesting but yeah it's built up as this crazy thing which can completely determine like anything that happens in the one piece world by pretty much children you know like i've been saying these people aren't very mature and now as a bonus not just is there a ridiculous amount of shit going on in the one piece world i mean we have the uh, death of whitebeard recently we yeah. have two new admirals and one of those admirals by the way is like not, not just as he's like not supposed to be there because he's banned but he's like going there he wants to go there and completely abolish the warlord system so, yeah like, this is yeah gonna be, like the biggest reverie in the history of the one piece world i mean it's gonna be it's already starting out pretty good and the yeah. actual meeting has not started yet yeah like we they showed us they should like the um in the recent chapter they showed us a little clip of um how they control the technology in um yeah. in like a home mary where they have like the slaves basically dragging right. along the floor that so was that fantastic they, yeah like that. showing exactly like showing people exactly how messed up Horrible. this place is and um what else uh 
how like you said how the um i think it was the mermaid how she was how they were she was like oh yeah it's not my type and they were like bro you can't say things like yeah, that because right. if you do <laughs> like you might start a war immediately and like to give you guys an idea like in um before the time skip um luffy um there was this one divine dragon who was super into mer fishmen and whatever and he was he was like collecting mermaid and whatever and um luffy said one thing luffy said one thing to him and like he shot his friend then Luffy had to punch him in the face because he shot his friend. Like these guys are lethal. They don't care. They don't care about your well-being. They, if you, if they don't like you, they will kill you. And they are completely above the law. The Navy listens to them, and no, but they don't have to report oh, to anybody yeah. else. So, yeah, you, I mean, the, when Luffy punched them, they send in Kizaru to take. Yeah, uh, exactly. There, so exactly, like yeah, it's not like this is like the the intensity of this arc is no joke. Like at first, when I first got into the reverie i was like ah i don't really want to read a whole bunch of chapters where it's just going to be me talking and all that stuff this is going to be a whole bunch of characters talking but like thinking about it now thinking about how um fujitora like you said wants to end the shichibukai he wants to end the warlord system which to me is huge um huge how uh the, not only that the revolutionary army is trying to come in there and infiltrate the whole thing that's big like we don't know what exactly they're going to do we don't know if they're going to kill everyone in the reverie we don't know if they're gonna kill specific people we don't know exactly what they're gonna do um minor things and also the the talk about luffy i find was very interesting because there was a lot of people that was like oh you know luffy yeah luffy's my boy okay cool like we should talk we should we like but then people were like oh you shouldn't talk about luffy like that because he's a pirate you know you don't want to be you like i feel like luffy's gonna come up a lot especially since he um Especially since he was brought up as being the fifth pirate emperor, or being the supposed fifth pirate emperor, yeah. with the recent um newspaper that came out. Yeah, that's uh, I, I had to make a whole video about that because so many people are saying like, oh, he's not actually an emperor, which I don't, I don't think. It, yeah, that's a huge thing about the reverie. But yeah, I, I think that he has to be an emperor, just because. Yeah. I, I mean, Morgan's pretty much said it. And he is like the biggest guy of the media, right? Pretty, you you don't become an emperor necessarily based on your strength. I mean, it's pretty hard to actually get to that point unless right. you're extremely strong. But I mean, like in the same way that Buggy became a warlord, like Luffy's decently strong. And as long as the world views you as that, they don't really know what's going on. You kind of just are. And that's going to throw in some serious things to the reverie. Like, it's going to change. I mean, just, and, you know, in the last chapter, at the very end, we got this guy walking up to the giant straw hat, whatever that Yeah, was that was weird. And he has the bounty poster for Luffy. Uh -huh. I mean, it's huge. It, it's That's going to be a huge factor in the reverie. They'll probably yeah. talk about Luffy. Like, that's going to come They're up. definitely going to, yeah. Because also, for anyone who does not feel that Luffy's the actual Pirate Emperor, I mean, look at the facts. Like, he has his yeah. own fleet now. He has his own, like, he has the um, straw, straw Hat Pirate fleet made up of not only pirates, but kings as well. The, the boxer, the right. boxing king dude, that guy's a part of it as well. On top of that, who else would it be? Who else, like... Yeah, Trafalgar Law is strong, but he's not as known as he hasn't done as much things as Luffy has done in such a little oh, yeah. amount of time. Hell no. yeah, so hell no. with how much but Luffy's resume is packed with so mm -hmm. much things. Like I know the government took took um took responsibility for what happened in Alabasta and all that stuff. But Dres Rosa alone to take down the technical ten, technically the government of that one country to basically come in there, storm the place and take it down by himself? That's huge. And then what happened on Candy on on um Big Mom's Island? Like getting there, like going there by itself without permission is unheard of. But leaving there with your life is out of the question. Like that's insane. So all the stuff that he's been doing in the past means that Luffy's definitely gonna be the also talked about in the Reverie. And whatever happens now, Luffy's gonna either become a huge target, or the people that are actually for Luffy are probably gonna do something that's like, hey. Luffy's out here doing more than the Navy's doing, and I could definitely see that leading into like a huge True. quarrel between some of the kings. That some, because there are gonna be people that are like, "Yo, where was the Navy when um, Crocodile?" Like they're probably gonna talk about more about Alabasta and be like, "Yo, the Navy didn't do anything with Alabasta. That was right. all the Straw Hat Pirates. Where were you guys? Where was the Navy when Drez when Drez Rosa was being, was being taken over by Do Flamingo? You know, I could definitely see that stuff coming up and there being a huge divide into the people that are like, fuck pirates, pirates are terrible people, and the people that are like, oh, but wait, there's Luffy and the Straw Hat crew, and they're actually very nice and they fight for us, you know? 
Yeah, that's actually really interesting that you bring that up because I, I haven't even really thought about that, but I think that definitely could happen. I mean, they've made Oda's made such a big point of like every time Luffy does this, the Navy takes credit for it or whatever. Like it's kind of covered up. No one realizes that Luffy's done it. But right. Fuji Tora made some moves in Dress Rosa, and now everyone realizes that Luffy was responsible for saving Dress Rosa, and you know, Dress Rosa being so fucked up in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. I, I think that yeah, that's a really good point. I think it's very possible that Luffy could be discussed for that. Like, what is going on? Why is the Navy not helping it? Why is the why, why is there a warlord who is supposed exactly. to be like a member of the Navy destroying this country? Two warlords, and then Luffy mm -hmm. comes and takes them down. Like, oh yeah, that's that's fantastic. Exactly. Oh, like, I, really, why... I hope that does come up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want them to throw like to throw shade and be like, okay, cool. You guys are trying like you guys talking about. Taking to like, trying to use this whole this random weapon that the Ponicas are talking about to just to take care of all the pirates, right? Cool. How are you gonna deal with people like, like you said, Doflamingo, who's out here trying to completely overrun countries by himself when you guys were nowhere to be found when that when that shit happened? You know, like, right. and on top of that, um, what happened in Wapo where um they talk like I, I like how they did like little little background things because I was like I was looking at characters like wow I know who that is but I don't really know where he's relevant and seeing um the whole bull the guy who has zonia the um the bull fruit um yeah seeing him be, like change the whole name become the new king of that place that to me was huge because he loves himself some luffy so i could i yeah, could I definitely that. see i could definitely see him leading that front of hey guys stop giving the um straw hat parts a bad name when he's literally the only one that really cares for us you know and for real then now that now that we raise that now that we raise a topic I'm wondering, because obviously Dragon's probably going to hear all this because right now he's like on watch spying on them. I wonder yeah. what Dragon, uh, Dragon's going to feel hearing how much of an impact his son has made on all these different countries. And I wonder if he's going to stop being such an asshole to his son and actually be like, yeah, you know what? I'm kind of proud of him, you know, because he's he's definitely shown like uh, he's shown a difference to his son. Like he's like, ah, Luffy's I, right, I guess. He's not that cool of a guy. I mean, he's he he does really? this, he does that, but I I just I don't really see him showing the support that I would believe. Like he's act like he acts like Gon's father. Gon's father. He, he I feel like he treats Luffy like yeah. how how Gon's Dude, father treats Gon. I I think you're exactly right, and I I absolutely love the way that Jing acts here the way I mean yeah he's not like you know coming out telling Luffy like right 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 I like what you're doing but. I feel like, you know, he, he's very confident himself. He knows he is quite a monster. And I don't want to say that he, like, expects this from Luffy. But, like, you know, he he feels like it would almost be patronizing Luffy to go out right. and spoil. He's just like, you know what, dude? Yeah, this kid. Yeah, this that makes sense. Kid. Like, he's a monster. I'm, I just can't wait. He, he seems to, like, enjoy when he hears about Luffy. You know? He just kind of, like, I smiles and is like, yep. That's right. <laughs> that's my boy. I mean, like, I'm not gonna brag about it or anything, but that's my son, right. you know? Exactly. I, 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 I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I love it. I really can't wait. I, I, yeah. I think we're gonna see a lot of dragon action, and oh, yeah. I can't wait. Like, I need that, because I feel like everything that we've seen is just, like, little spurts. Like, the first time we saw Dragon, when he stopped Smoker from basically almost killing his son, mm -hmm. like, I saw it, and I was like, bro. Who is this man that we never saw him again for like a while? Right. And then we saw like little like like excerpts of him like walking down the street with his hood on or something like that or like talking to. And now we're actually getting like a full like we've rarely ever gotten that full picture of Dragon to see. Okay, yeah, I can see the resemblance between him and Luffy, you know. And now seeing actually seeing him like I want to see Dragon. Um, I I want to see Dragon play more of a role in this story than he's been now because he's the leader of the revolutionary army i feel like oh, if yeah, there's any time. point for him to come in it's now during the reverie because i don't think there's going to be another reverie by um, oh, by the time the manga ends because this is like obviously they've already this is the first this is the first reverie we've seen right in the manga or not y yeah i mean it's the first one we, we've seen flashbacks but yeah yeah exactly like one. i i with how, how with how they disperse it, I highly doubt we're gonna see another one. So if we're gonna see Dragon do True. something, it has to be now, you know. But yeah, I mean, we might not even like even if like the story ends within four years, or whatever. There might just never be reveries again at all. Exactly. Like it, it's probably just gonna be over. Exactly. So, yeah. And like right now, the story is like a ticking time bomb because it's not the delivery that's a huge like, that's a big that's a big problem. Like we're. We're not forgetting it, but we also have to remember there is that 
big fucking problem in Wano that is Kaido. And uh, I don't yeah. like like um I I kind of I don't really understand what his like I get that he's I, he's making the smile he's he's um paying people to make the smiles and whatever and he wants to I guess he wants to find like a worthy opponent or whatever and he wants to build an army but like it scares me because I see Kaido I'm like who is going to stop this man like who's capable oh of stopping this dude? Like I don't right. like I've seen theories saying that okay, this is gonna be Zoro's time to shine. We haven't seen Zoro actually like you know put in the um put in the actual work that all the other characters have. Like we seen Luffy go to his limit and pass his limit already with um the last arc and the Dress Rosa arc already with Snake Man and Bounce oh, Man. Yeah. Um, but Absolutely. we have not seen Zoro do, do anything that Mihawk, like, maybe the whole, like, cutting Pika in half and stuff like that. But we haven't seen Zoro get to the point of desperation that he's gotten to it before the time skip. And I really can't wait to see that. But I also highly doubt that that point of desperation is going to get him to the point where he could fight Kaido one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, th th there's no doubt that this is, like, the arc of Zoro. I mean... Like, yeah. This is Wano. The, 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 everyone there has a sword. Like, this is definitely where Zoro is going to possibly have his best arc of all time. But exactly. I don't think he would really even be 1v1 in Kaido. I don't think anyone in the story can 1v1 Kaido. Oh, no, no, no. Definitely think, not. Yeah, definitely not. It, it's going to be some, like, crazy supernovas versus Kaido or something. Maybe even, like, the full monster trio plus Jinbei or whatever we call that now. Exactly. Uh, it, it's going to be. I, I really wonder, like, is Kaido even going to get taken down at all? Like, or is it going to be like Hulk and Island where they go in there and then they just get out and that's it? It's hard yeah. to say. Yeah, like, I don't... The thing is that, like, they have to stop him. Like, it's not even... A, like, they definitely have yeah. to get... Like, they have to get rid of him because he's definitely... Like, if he's not a problem now, he's going to become a problem, especially because he's, like, um... Especially because he said, like, he blatantly said, I'm going to get rid of Monkey D. Luffy. So he's an immediate threat to, um, the Straw Hat Pirates. So... Right he like they have to they sooner or later they're gonna have to get rid of him the question is just like how are they gonna do that i mean the good thing is that technically because he's a yonko he's neither an ally to pirates or to the navy so he's an enemy to both so i guess that kind of helps but then i could also see them seeing okay luffy's a problem right now because luffy's getting way too strong way too fast we do not need a gold roger let's kind of work with kaido to get rid of <laughs> luffy i could see them doing that and i don't want them to do that because that's going to be a huge problem because right now i don't think luffy's at the at the um is capable to fight any of the admirals one-on-one -on -one yet especially no. not a kainu and i no, think if no, anybody no. he's gonna try to fight a kainu you think so yeah because i i, I Either that's, him yeah. or Sabo, because it, it makes the most sense. It's Sabo, dude. I'm telling you, it's Sabo. Especially, not just obviously is he like the man who inherited Ace's will and, and his devil fruit, but it's yeah. like it's the fire fruit versus the magma fruit. The magma fruit is supposed yeah. to be superior. I, it's, they need a rematch. It's gotta be. Not to mention also with you know Akainu being the leader of the navy and mm -hmm. Sabo not exactly the leader but he might be by the end of the story at least the right. second highest in the revolutionary army yeah it's like the perfect matchup i think i, I don't think it's gonna be luffy i don't think luffy's really ever gonna like try to solo an admiral i could see him doing it because of how hot-headed he is but i also i agree with oh, you in yeah that. like I, I i know his team is gonna try to stop him because if anybody, Zoro is going to try to stop him. Because Zoro has been one. Zoro, in my opinion, is one of the most logical people. Like, obviously, like going back to when they fought, when Usopp had his little quarrel, and he was like, "Oh, we're going to oh, fight, and we're going to decide." When Zoro was like, "Listen, man, this is how it's going to work." He left the group. You can't just put him back on. Like, that's not how this works. This is not a buddy buddy. Like, this is my favorite scene with Zoro when he was like, "This is not like a buddy buddy play thing. This is real pirate stuff." There is no time for playing games. It's either you punish him for leaving or you don't invite him back at all. Because I'm not going to be part of this crew if you just invite him back in because he's your friend. Seeing that, I was like, Zoro knows what's up. Because he knows this is not like... He he already saw that the Grand Line is no joke. You can't have this little oh, yeah. this little thing where it's like, Oh, he's my Nakama. I'm going to bring him back over because, you know, um, he's my best friend. And I even though Usopp is kind of a butt sometimes oh i still want him around the crew like seeing that i could definitely see zoro being like listen luffy i know you want to fight kaido i know you want to try to fight big mom but you're not capable of that yet you already had a problem with katakuri like you can't yeah people like that, those man. are in a whole different realm i wonder if he would do something like that like try to hold i mean 
it's almost like, don't you think he might know better at this point to try and talk Luffy yeah. out of picking a fight with someone? But maybe he yeah. could do it, I mean. I mean, like, we've seen we've seen some characters do some crazy things. I mean, I've never thought I would see the day where Sanji would kick Luffy in the face again, and he did it. So, like, we've seen them do surprising... I mean, I guess that situation was a little bit different, but we've seen characters do surprising things, and I feel like to protect his captain, he would... Like, it, at that point, it's either like, I'm gonna ride or die with you, or I'm gonna try to talk you out of it. You know? Because right. you, you have to think about, like, knowing someone like, not only Zora, but the whole team. They all have their... It's not... That's why I like the Straw Hat Pirates. They all have their own goals. You know, they all have their... It's not just like, we're gonna follow Luffy to the end. They all have their own dreams, and this all... It's like a synergy effect where, like, their dreams help build up on each other, and it's gonna help oh, Luffy yeah. get to where he wants to get to. I could see that becoming a problem where it's like, Luffy... If you fight him, I just want you to know you're putting your whole dream about becoming Pirate King in jeopardy. And we don't want that. Because you're right. not capable of fighting him yet. So I, yeah. it's going to become a huge argument of like, it's either you wait, and wait till you're strongest that you could actually become the Pirate King, or you take the risk now and possibly get yourself killed. Probably get himself killed. Ex exactly, <laughs> exactly. But um... Almost for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. But one thing that really interests me is that I'm kind of curious of where the navy is gonna be at the end. Actually, no, not even the na not even the navy yet. I'm curious. I'm curious because they haven't really talked about it in a while. And this is this also um this this also kind of got me really curious about the whole Mary um the Mary was it Mary Jerosi or something like that Mary jo I can't Mary remember Joie. the name Mary Joie yeah the Mary the Mary Joie um the little treasure what oh yeah. What is, like, are they gonna talk about the One Piece anytime soon? Because I feel like they've completely neglected that, that, um, the One Piece. And I'm wondering now, is that the treasure they're talking about? No, or... no, 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 there's no way. I heard that, that's like the second time I've heard someone say that, and the first yeah. time I was like, th that's just, what? It would be too like, easy. It would be way like, too easy. E e I mean, I guess by itself, just looking at it for what it is, it, it's already what. But mm -hmm. for the One Piece, there's just no way. I, I can't, and not to mention, I mean, I don't think that's, like, I mean, like, Roger made it pretty clear that he, like, left it somewhere that no one knows about. Right, like, he left it in a place in the grand line where, like, yeah. Right, so, I, there's, I just cannot imagine that, and not to mention, I, I don't really want that to be the case, because yeah, that would be now we have easy. the One Piece and whatever this thing is. Right, right. Like, yeah, the ancient treasure, or the, the secret treasure. Exactly. But now I'm wondering, like, is Luffy- You think Luffy still even really cares about the One Piece anymore? Because I feel like- I feel like oh, he's gotten to the yes. point- You think so? I think that it is- I mean, okay, like, he obviously has a lot of- pri Like, he even would- I would imagine prioritize his crewmates over getting the One Piece. Like, he did in Sabodi. He, like, told them to run away once he realized they were outmatched. But at the right. same time, like, that is the thing driving him. I think that, in his mind, like, I, I, I feel like, you know, he, he's always seeking freedom. That's kind of what the Ds do in general. Yeah, and yeah. just him knowing that there is this treasure out there that's supposed to be legendary. It's out there, and he can't have it right now. He doesn't have it. He feels right. like that, that he's lacking freedom from that and he needs to discover I, I don't really know exactly what I'm saying but I think it kind of makes sense I, I get what you're saying like it's not yeah. like I don't think it's that he's trying to become I get what you're saying like he's trying to it's kind of like he's trying to find himself yeah in a way like he's trying he's trying to you could kind of see that he's like he's trying to he's trying to discover who he is exactly especially after this whole ace thing happened and whatever because I feel like that I never really realized how, how much that ace thing really hit him until like honestly like just now, because thinking back to like how thinking back to the arc after Ace died, how they talked about how they showed um Sab the the childhood of Sabo, Luffy, and Ace, like he they they made their dream together, and to see him die, it's almost it's like it's almost like Naruto wants to become stronger, but then Sasuke just ends up dying, and he's like, yo, who do I who's my rival now? Like, what do I do? You know, like like seeing that, it's, it's kind of like he's trying. It's I feel like he's still kind of recovering from that but he's also trying to figure out exactly what kind of pirate he's gonna be and who he's gonna be because i don't think Lu i know luffy cares about becoming about being the strongest obviously because that's why he tries to fight everybody he can but i don't think luffy actually cares about i think luffy only cares about getting strong 
to better protect his Nakama and also become a better pirate. I don't think getting strong is like the comp is like the main goal. I think, like you said, it's his. He's looking for that sense of freedom so that he could actually go like, yeah. okay, cool. I have the One Piece. I'm happy. Like I'm good right now. Yeah, like you know? he likes getting strong. It's it's cool to be powerful, but right. like realistically it's it's a means to an end like, exactly it's just something he can't he cannot achieve his goal without becoming strong so exactly he, just, he, he realized at a young age yeah well i guess i just gotta become a monster complete yeah. monster yeah especially sure. with this whole thing with them um, that that happened to ace i'm sure what, go, what went through his head is like i'm not gonna let any of my friends get out of like die in my hands again because i refuse to let that happen because yeah. that that shit hurt you know, yeah, like he's kind of like, even really understand the concept of like that someone close to him could die. He's exactly. Never, well, well, I mean, I guess there was Sabo. Like he thought Sabo was dead at that. point. Yeah, but I feel like, like he, he was, was a lot too younger young, back then. And he, yeah, and he couldn't do anything about that. You know, like this is the right, scene yeah, where exactly. like he died protecting him. It, so that's in like his this is arms, my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure he does like in his his in his hands in his head. He's like, I'm the person that told this person, hey, join my crew. That means they're life is in my head like they gave my life up they gave their life up to me i'm responsible for that so i cannot i can't slack and do this that's why i think and that's why i loved him in the whole big mom arc even though honestly it made no sense the fact that people forget he didn't eat he didn't sleep and he was going from battle to battle going in and out of gear fourth so when he went against yeah. katakuri he was nowhere near well, he was probably, knowing Luffy, he was probably close to his full strength, but he was still extremely fatigued because he had no rest before then and no food before then. We all know how Luffy's healing factor works. Once he eats food, he's oh, ba yeah. it's basically a sense of I don't know how that makes sense, but it... I don't know either. Thing, so. <laughs> but, but, like, I mean, like, he's, he's super big about his Nakama. Like, he loves his Nakama, and I just really hope that in the future of the series, they don't do something where, like, that's used against him. Because I could definitely see something happening where it's like, listen, it's either you continue living your dream as a pirate, or I had, like, or, or, like, maybe they, it's like something that happened with Robin, where it's like, yo, I kidnapped X, um, pirate, um, Straw Hat member. Like, what are you gonna do? You know, I could definitely see something like that happening in the future. And, um, actually kind of, sw kind of switching topics. One thing I did see randomly and um it was kind of curious to me and it's cool that you met it's funny because you did mention that this is going to be like Zor the next arc is going to be basically zoro's arc i saw i didn't actually watch the video but i saw a thumbnail of someone saying in the next arc zoro is going to lead the crew what exactly That's... that uh, like i, I thought that was that. yeah i thought it was super far-fetched and i was like i mean technically i could see where you're going with this because Every most people left the crew at some point. I mean, um, except for Chopper and Frankie and Brooke. Nami left the crew first at one point again, then came back. Robin Robin got kidnapped, so technically that wasn't really leaving. Usopp left during that same arc, and then we have Sanji. So it's like Luffy's closest yeah, friends. Yeah, that's weird. I never leave. really thought about how many people exactly, did that. exactly. So, so like when I when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's kind of crazy. And then I thought about it, and I was like, damn. But what incentive would he have? Like, would he? I like. I feel like the only incentive he would have is either because I don't think Zoro has any real ties to anybody outside the world, outside of the Straw Hat crew. So I don't think it's any. It's going to be anything that has to do with like family or whatever, unless he's also part of some crazy family like Sanji is. Um, oh jeez. But uh, I'm wondering if he's going to just one day just be like, "Yo, you guys are playing games right now. Like, I'm done with this play play pirate bullshit. Like, I'm trying to become the strongest swordsman. You promised me that, and you're not." giving in to your promise it's the only that's the only thing i could see that's the only way i could see zoro actually saying yeah i'm gonna leave the crew yeah i i i i can see how it's a possibility but i, de I definitely can't say that I yeah think it's likely exactly like zoro's been impossible. there since day one zoro's right. been, zoro's been there he's dealt with all the luffy bullshit like i think if he would have left he would have left by now Absolutely. like he's at this point, it's like, Luffy's my bro, like, I can't, I'm doing, right. the, it, it, it's like, I'm doing, I have my own dreams, but I'm doing this for him. Yeah, but, um, I mean, not to mention, even though, like, he does have his own ambition, he takes that pretty seriously. We right. clearly saw in Thriller Bark that, I guess, his top priority really is making Luffy the Pirate King. He was willing exactly. to let himself die, which would not allow him to accomplish his own dream, so exactly yeah i mean I, I guess really luffy is top priority for him 
Yeah, and also like if anything, it um no not yeah you're right that that was Dillard Bark where he um took Kuma's um the orb thing and he was like yo this is all of yeah. Luffy's pain, and then he's like I'm gonna take it, and then Lissandra's like what happened he's like nothing, <laughs> that that was the nothing dopest happened. scene. <laughs> that was the dopest One Piece. Ever. All my favorite scenes of One Piece were had had so had Zoro somewhere in there. Right, like Zoro is right, Zoro is the fucking is great. goat. I love Zoro so much, man. That's why I need to see him go in. I need to see him go in Absolutely. in the next dude. arc. I need to see. That's him why everyone's somebody. so hyped for Wano. Like everyone wants yeah. Wano so bad because they know it's Zoro's arc. Yes, it has. Cause it's it's like if it's anybody else's arc, it makes absolutely no sense. Cause he's going to a land filled of samurai, and like he already fought a samurai. Um, in the uh, that was that was Thriller Bark, right? Yeah, he fought he fought the samurai in Thriller Bark, yep. and he made a big deal out of that because he was like, oh wow, I've never fought someone that, that except for Mihawk. I never fought someone so good with the sword before, you know. Um, yeah, samurai are gonna be insane in Wano. Exactly. Now, another cure. Another thing I'm kind of curious about, with having to do with like how One Piece might end. I I, I feel like the Navy's in a really awkward position right now. Out of I feel like the pirate the pirate world is kind of more stagnant because the pirate world is always gonna be the pirate world. It's ever changing, and that kind of makes it uh, static. However, I feel like the Navy's in a very odd position right now because of how much random shit is going on below the hood. You know, with Fujitora ten semi kinda sorta defecting in a in a sense, with um the other dude, his friend kind of um uh what's his name? You said it before. Uh Fujitora? No no no, not, not the Wait. the guy that Fujitora was talking to in nine on nine oh five. Oh, Ryo Kigyo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, with him kind of siding with him on it and he him going like, Okay, yeah, I could see your point. Um with uh with Sabo with not Sabo, with Kobe being a part of it and Kobe kind of being that one guy who's slowly building himself up, but is also a really close friend to Luffy. Stuff like that, I feel like is gonna hit the Navy hard, especially when it all comes like I I, we already spoke about it, but I feel like the whole about Alabasta thing is gonna come out is gonna come out is gonna come out the bushes. Like I feel like they're gonna finally be like, "Yo, that wasn't the government. That was Luffy." Just so you guys know, like yeah, I feel definitely. like a lot of different things are gonna cause Navy like people to like, slowly lose trust in the Navy, and it's already slowly been happening. And I feel like um, Oda has slowly been going like, "Hey, listen, the world is slowly looking at the Navy with like kind of sketchy eyes because they're like, bro, why are you never here?" Why is nobody every why every time the Navy's involved, something bad is happening? Like right, why like, why well, you why guys... do we even have you guys? Like this doesn't exactly. make any sense. Mm-hmm. Like I just I don't know. Like I just I, I see something I I, I I sense something bad happening to the Navy after this whole reverie thing because it's there have been two the the Navy has been responsible for too many bad things and too many odd occurrences for them not to get punished for it. You know? Right. Yep. Definitely. And like, I don't know if it's gonna be the Divine Dragons being a part, doing something about. Well, no, the Divine Dragons probably won't do anything about it because they honestly don't care about the how the world is. But um, I could dev. I I don't know if it's gonna be like other higher powers in the Navy. I don't know if it's gonna be Garp who's gonna say something about it. I don't know. Like, something's gonna happen. Something has to happen with the Navy, and it's gonna be bad for them. And it's probably gonna be good for the pirate world. But whatever's gonna happen. I feel like I also feel like Doflamingo is going to be a reason for it as well. You know, because Doflamingo, I oh, think oh, so the because Dress Rosa situation, yeah, yeah. Not only that, but also because they keep showing him, and they mm -hmm. showed him in Impel Down, just kind of like going like, "Oh wow," so, like, talking about assassins and doing the whole the talking, do, having his whole spiel before they show the guy um go, showing the um the the giant straw hat and Mary Joie. Um they're showing him way too often for him not to mean something, and I feel like they could have easily just killed him off like they did um, Moria, but they didn't. And for someone like Doflamingo, he's he, if he's still alive, he's definitely there for a reason. Because think about when they made Crocodile live. Yeah, that is true. I mean, why wouldn't they just kill him? I mean, he, he is like calling out that there should be assassins coming after him, but exactly why aren't why they're not apparently? So like, what exactly. is going on with that? So. I don't know if, I don't know if the Navy is gonna like I could see the Navy militarizing the Shichi Bukai and going like, hey, like you guys are gonna like it's either like like it's nut up or shut up, like you guys are gonna start working for us now. I could see them kinda doing that. But um 
I I'm, I I could see them trying to weaponize um Doflamingo. I don't know how exactly they're gonna do that, but um, I know somebody somebody just said Luffy and Dofi al alliance. I don't see that happening. <laughs> I don't see that happening anytime. I think I feel like Dofi's ego is too big. Yeah, I I don't see that happening. But you know what? No matter how unrealistic it would be, I would love it. I, Dofi's my favorite character. Oh yeah, yo, that would be dope. Times, and I would just be like, you know what? It doesn't have to make sense. I'll take it. Whatever. <laughs> if Dofi's in the story, then I'm very happy. Yeah. Now Dofi is probably Dofi was my favorite, um, favorite One Piece villain because you don't in oh, animes yeah. nowadays you don't get that villain that's just evil for being evil's sake. Like I what? thought he was gonna have a bad upbringing. No, he just said, "Why are my parents so poor?" This is dumb. Okay, <laughs> cool. I'm gonna kill everybody. Like seeing yeah. that, I was like, bro, this guy's just a bad person. Like he was born evil. It's horrible. You never really see that in in um villains anymore. I've seen that in Doflamingo, I was like, this guy's just naturally evil, and I like it. He reminds me of Frieza from Dragon Ball Z, and I love that aspect of characters when they're just bad to be bad because then you don't need a backstory. It's just like, he, why he do that? Because he's Doflamingo. Like, why are you asking questions? Yeah. He's yeah. he likes he he likes ruining people's lives. That's how he gets off. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. I, I would love to see more of him for sure. Yeah, that's my boy Dofi. Somebody else asked um who was stronger, Dragon or Kaido? Uh I, I, I can't think even Kaido is probably the strongest in the series right now. Just based on what the narrator said, but uh, I think Dragon's I probably the second strongest i don't know I, i've heard people <laughs> say like he's not even admiral level and i'm like what 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 yeah I've, I've heard i've heard it all dude i mean i think sabo is admiral level so like i don't know some people just get crazy on my channel yeah so like, like i i i definitely wouldn't go ahead and say dragon is not admiral like i feel like right. dragon if he even, even right now my idea of drag i put dragon on such a high pedestal <laughs> like i'm like even if he doesn't have a devil fruit even if he just has hockey, oh, yeah. he's still probably strong as hell. Because look at Sabo. Sabo had no devil fruit, and he has a little dragon hand thing yeah. with like the he's armored hockey and whatever. Non -stop. Like, yeah, he didn't even need the devil, the the flame flame fruit. Like he was fine. Like, I I just um young the same person said if um if it's one on one, Kaido will win. Like exactly. I said, I, like I want to say that, but I don't like. This is the thing. When I first saw Whitebeard, I was like, Whitebeard is probably kind of strong, you know? I know, I knew he was strong, but I didn't expect him to be, like, Tremor, Tremor fruit strong. Like, seeing oh, yeah. my men bend the earth with one punch, I was like, whoa, that's a crazy power I would have mm -hmm. never expected. So you might not even know, like, somebody made a theory that Dragon's powers can show the weather because of the storm that he right. caused when he saved Luffy, um, when yeah. Smoke, Sm um, Smoker tried to kill him. Like, we don't know what Dragon can do yet. We don't know if Dra Dragon can may... Dragon could may well be a Zonia fruit and that could turn into a dragon. We have no idea so what Dragon's capable of doing, but I don't want to answer that question until I see Dragon in a fight, and then I know for sure that Dragon is like at a certain level and I could be like, okay, cool, I know that Kaido is not is, is, is definitely stronger than him. Yeah, I think we're all waiting for the dragon fight. That is one of the most I mean he, he is pretty much the Madara Uchiha of One Piece at this point. Like, oh, yeah. He's just oh, casually yeah. mentioned five mm -hmm. or six times in the entire series, and every time that he is, we're all just like, oh my god, there he is. Yeah. He, he's he's going to be fantastic. And then one day, and then randomly in a chapter, he's going to throw meteors at people just for fun. Because that's, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what someone like no, Madara would do. But yeah, him and Fujitora. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of they they talked about him before and i'm like kind of curious about him like i don't i didn't even know he was part of the shichibukai but fucking um what's his name white bear's opposed son mm -hmm. the dude with the the dude with the lance like i don't even know what his deal is like he showed up once right. saying i'm gonna be monkey d luffy i guess because i guess monkey d luffy is like um is getting too powerful now and they don't he doesn't want to deal with it but um I don't even know what his deal is. Like, I don't know how, what exactly, yeah, what he's, he's, he's gonna, weirdo. yeah, like, I don't know what he's gonna contribute to the Chichibukai, because apparently he's a part of it. I don't know what he's gonna mean for the end. I think if anybody's gonna become a big deal, it's gonna be Blackbeard. Yeah, oh, I, I, I think Blackbeard's pretty much being built up to be the, the like, most powerful character 
in the end game besides that right. Luffy who will most likely take him down. That that's another yeah, reason I think that Sabo will end up fighting Akainu because I think Luffy's gonna oh, have his hands full of Blackbeard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, this should the be the final have, boss. The Straw Hats have a lot to worry about. Oh yeah, like I mean, just they, the entire Blackbeard crew, like. Yeah, and that crew is no joke. He's building it up to be much stronger than it than it should be. Like even with the fleet, right. like it's it's crazy. Like I just yeah, because like they have the they have that one that one um that one warden from um Impel Down, the samurai dude that yeah. Zoro was probably gonna have to fight. Rain, I think his name for was. sure. Um, yeah, like they have Burgess, who without a devil fruit is already a problem. Mm -hmm. Like they have yeah, way too many. Too, so. Yeah, exactly, and I feel like whatever fruit he's gonna get, he's gonna get that one awkward fruit that's like, oh, the, wow, that doesn't make sense, but he's gonna make it work to his to his capabilities like perfectly, like sure, yeah. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen with like. There's so much shit. Like Blackbeard is a problem. Um, I don't know what the current Whitebeard pirates are doing right now. Like I don't know if they're gonna help out with the situation. I don't know if they're gonna even involve themselves. I feel like they're slowly like just wiping their hands clean because they're like, hey, Whitebeard's gone. Let's just stay out this shit, cause a lot of crazy stuff is going on. The reverie's happening. Revolutionary Army's trying to do some stuff. Luffy's has a fleet. He's a Yonko now. I'm. Let's just <laughs> yeah. back away. Let's just step away from the whole situation and just hope, like, pray for everybody, cause we're just right now we're not ready for any of the nonsense. Right, for sure. Yeah, Luffy is. It's, it's going to be a lot to deal with for sure. Both, I mean, both crews really. Yeah. If they're yeah. not already, and both, yeah, I mean, both of them are already causing quite an uproar in the world nonstop. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know. Like I, for the most part, overall, I could definitely see Luffy and his crew. I could definitely see Luffy and his crew becoming like, um, becoming. Not, I wouldn't say on par with Gold Rogers' crew, but like in terms of symbolism. They're gonna become like people are gonna definitely start comparing them more to Gold Rogers crew and be like, oh wow, he's the next Gold Roger. He represents freedom and all that stuff. And I could definitely see him. I, like he's not gonna become as feared as Gold Roger is, but I feel like people are gonna see him more of like a ray of hope. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I think by the end, like people are, the majority of the world is gonna see the Straw Hats as an actual like how they usually do when they go to places and they help them out. And they're like. Oh, yeah, Luffy, I guess some pirates are actually good guys. I feel like there's a good chance the rest of the world that maybe actually will be directly affected, depending on how the story really does end, depending on what the One Piece is, depending on if he does blow up the red line or whatever with that theory. Exactly. He could actually end up directly affecting the majority of the world in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I could... He... He's. I can't see him becoming that feared pirate captain that people are. That's why I kind right, of... like. Yeah, I know. I understand why Oda was trying to make it so that Luffy was completely against having a fleet, because I know that having a fleet behind him is definitely not Luffy's style. No, but no. um, I could see people b being scared of the fleet, but I, I see him more, like you said, like I see him more as like a ray of hope, and see I mm -hmm. see him as like someone that's like, okay, yeah, this person represents what the world could be if we stop being complete assholes. You know, pretty much. And like I like like um and like Kobe Kobe probably too because Kobe is like the Navy version of Luffy, kind of not not as headstrong as Luffy is, but like I could see I could see Kobe as being that one guy that's like hey, like why are we doing so, why are we giving so many problems to these people when we're supposed to be protecting him when we're supposed yeah to be I mean he already him. pretty much did it at the end of the war the best when he stood up to Akainu he's definitely exactly. willing to share his opinion he's got some pretty good ones so exactly so I mean. Like, definitely, if anything, like, I could definitely say that, obviously, Luffy's gonna play an important part. Kobe's definitely gonna play an important part because they're raising, they're, like, building, I feel like they're building him up now. Um, Kaido's a problem that needs to be solved, like, today. Uh, what else? And freaking, um, I, I don't, I'm, like, the Admirals to me are not even a problem anymore. Like, I know they're a problem, but, like, they're, like, the last thing on my mind because I'm, like, it's just, like, an afterthought because I'm, like, bro. They have to deal with so much other stuff, and like Kaido, yeah. obviously Kaido being the biggest problem. Like they have to deal with so much other stuff, and it's like once they kill Kaido, or sorry, once they do whatever they do with Kaido and they get out, they survive or whatever they do. 
Like, that's it. They're an automatic target target with the Navy because once you mess with Kaido, it's like Big, Mo Big Mom's going to probably see that and be like, okay, wow, it's a guy that escaped. Let me go and handle that because mm -hmm, I'm not mm -hmm. letting him, like, I'm not, I'm not going to have him live around in my city. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 looking to be uh, like One Piece is looking to be a crazy, crazy, crazy story. And if you're not already caught up with One Piece, listen, man. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like... What are you doing? Like, I understand My Hero Academia is lit, but my dude, One Piece. That One Piece life is crazy. I yeah. understand there are 906 chapters, but honestly, you 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 could. Nah, you probably can't skip any of them, honest, to be honest with you. There, there's, there are too many different things. Yeah, everything is so crucial. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, you, if you're not already reading One Piece, get on that shit. For but sure. We've already, yeah, we basically just hit the mark that I want to kind of hit. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I did not, that, that went by really fast, because I, yeah, I enjoyed it, the conversation. It it was, we're talking about One Piece. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, um... I'm gonna let you drop your plug-in, Franky, so that people can go to your your channel if they want to catch more One Piece action and more um, anime overall action as well. Yeah, cool. I mean, I you know, again, I, I run a One Piece channel. Uh, been doing it for about a year now. Just mainly talking about One Piece and a few other animes. And also something I kind of started recently was if you check the description of any of my more recent videos, you'll see that I have a link to my Discord, which is pretty much just a place yeah, that a lot yeah. of people come together and talk mainly about one piece again a lot about one piece a lot of discussion like versus battles with this person beat this person and a few other animes too i'd love to see a ton more people in there so yeah make sure to check that out and yeah yeah honestly you have to say I, when i saw that you had your discord and i looked and i looked and i looked at it looked at the link i was like oh shit i should probably make a discord for my channel so that yeah see you that should you had it's, discord. they're really effective yeah yeah, no, I, I, I made one. I made one for it recently. So you guys can hop on my Discord as well if you want to. Um, I'm still setting things up right now. It's still kind of unorganized, but it's there if you want to talk. That's where I am usually. But yeah, um, thank you so much, Frankie, for coming, for joining the, the podcast for this episode. Oh, yeah, thank I, you, dude. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's fun. Nah, I appreciate it, man. This conversation was dope. Like talking, talking one piece with like someone that, with an expert is like... I feel like uh, I know yeah, so much expert. now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But that is it for this week, guys. Don't forget to go sub to my boy, Franky. Check out his channel to watch his videos. Support the boy. All right? Take care, guys.